I apologize for the delay. There was some technical issues over here. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I am Dr. Abdul Salam, an interventional fellow from Tabba Heart Institute. And I'll be presenting a case of Atavi, which was done from the axillary artery. Uh, this was the very first case we have done, and uh, actually it was the very first case uh, of Atavi done from the axillary artery done in Pakistan only. Uh, that was actually our first case, and subsequently we had a few cases later. So I'll start with the name of Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So my case was of a 75 years gentleman who was a smoker, recently found to have atrial fibrillation on ECG, which was done routinely before his prostate surgery. So subsequently, the echocardiography was done. His EF was 43%. He had low flow, low gradient, likely severe aortic stenosis with area of 0.5. So uh, to confirm the need of intervention or not, we went for aortic valve calcium score, which was quite elevated. It was more than 4,000. His coronary calcium score was checked in the same scan. It was more than 100. So the need for aortic valve intervention, that's through SAVER or TAVER, was explained to the patient and the family with all the pros and cons. And we have involved our surgical team as well. So after a detailed discussion with both teams, patient has completely refused the surgical option, and he has opted to go for TAVI. So we have referred the patient for CT with TAVI protocol. So these are the important, important things I'm showing over here. So apart from the aortic row, the sinus of Valsava, uh, the area, the height of the coronaries, which seems to be all adequate and promising, we have also to decide our uh, um, uh, arterial access on the, basis of, uh, on, the, on the basis of this CT scan. So uh, usually and uh, our previous practice was always to do it from the femoral artery. But when we came to the femoral artery of this patient, particularly it was slightly uh, disappointing for us. Because if we see that his femoral uh, artery size was uh, not that bad, it was around 5.8, which is acceptable because anything more than 5.5 is fine. But the more we go proximate to the iliac artery, usually the, guard, the artery gets bigger and bigger. But in this case, due to maybe disease or calcification, so it was actually much smaller than what we need. It was just 3.7 in the left side and 3.4 in the right side. And with this size, definitely we cannot put our large sheath because we'll exp expect a lot of uh, complication. So from here, we start uh, looking for another alternatives. So we have seen the people over, all over the world doing it that from a different axis, including the transapical, transaortic, transsubclavian or axillary, transcarotid, and transcable. So looking at the all circumstances in our hospital and all the facilities we have with all our expertise, we thought that the transsubclavian or transaxillary seems to be more feasible for us. So we came to the axillary and the uh, subclavian artery, and the size was exactly what we need. It was 6.4, which is more than 5.5. So it was promising, and we thought we can put our big sheath over there, and we can proceed with the uh, procedures. Again, we have gone to the registries and uh, whatever has been internationally published. So from this axis particularly, they have reported mortalities of 4.4%, the complication were 3.1, and stroke was 5.4. So all these data we have put it in front of our patient and his family, the patient with big smile, he told us like just to go ahead. He himself has signed the consent and he said to start with the name of Allah. So patient was prepared for the TAVI and the coronary angiogram and his serum creatinine was fine. His hemoglobin and platelets were also within normal limits. So we have taken a few more. This was our secondary access for the big tail for the aortogram and all. First of all, from the same axis, we have done a coronary angiogram. And as we see over here, it's grossly, grossly non-obstructive. Yeah. So we came to our subclavian and axillary axis. So we have done an angiogram of the subclavian and the axillary. We see it over here. So we have taken the axis in, uh, under a combination of fluoroscopy and ultrasound guided uh, in the left axillary artery. First of all, we have put a four French sheath. We have upgraded, upgraded that later to 18 French sheath, which is going to accommodate our valve and the rest of the instrument. Uh, standard double broglide implantation was done before we do that for the closure at the end of the procedure. So this is our aortogram, and we can see that there is mild to trace to mild aortic regurgitation. And we can see that from the other side, our pacing wire is coming from the right uh, femoral vein. 
So this is our valve is coming still outside the body just to see the size. And uh, initially we decided over here to uh, first of all balloon the valve to facilitate the implantation of our uh, of our uh, prosthetic valve. So the aortic valve was dilated uh, with a 22 millimeter balloon. And this is our 29 millimeter evolute R core valve, which is self expanding has reached its destination and it was deployed during uh, a rapid pacing to the uh, RV. So this is our valve is being implanted and this is the final result. So it seems to be good and uh, exactly that what we want almost there is no aortic regurgitation. And Alhamdulillah we had no coronary complication. So um, we have taken all the instrument and it was the time to close the arterial axis. So it was actually a technique of balloon assisted sheath remover. So the Broglide, which we have already implanted before taking everything inside, so they have tied down uh, while a 7 uh, by 14 millimeter a PTA balloon was placed over there inside the artery at the side of the puncture. We have taken it from the femoral side, from the femoral axis side. And we have inflated over there to facilitate uh, our uh, uh, closure and make sure that there is no bleeding at all. And I would say, again, we were lucky enough, and by the grace of Allah, we had no complication at all. Everything went smoothly. Hemostasis was achieved. And um, just like to tell you what was the, uh, before the uh, implantation of the valve, the uh, gradients were 41. And after that, we have done an echo. It was only six. Uh, which is uh, remarkably decreased, so it means that you know our valve uh, uh, implantation was successful. At the end of the procedure, we have done uh, synchronized uh, DCCV to restore the sinus rhythm, and that was also uh, um, uh, successful. We had no va 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 cardiac or vascular complication. After the procedure, patient remained uh, very much stable clinically, hemodynamically, and I still remember after 48 hours exactly of the procedure, I went to see the patient. There was only a small sunny blast on that area. I could remove it, and there was not even a bruise over there. So we were successful and lucky with that. And the next day, eco uh, cardiography was done, uh, which has shown normal function of the uh, uh, prosthetic valve uh, with the gradient of seven only, and we have called it a successful procedure. Subsequently, we have uh, three other procedures. Some of them have complications, some of them went smoothly, but so far, this was a very good experience, and I think we advise everyone, if they cannot go through the femoral artery, this is a good alternative access for whatever we have over here in Pakistan. Okay. I'll thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, Salam. Nice case. Thank you. Nice case. Uh, what I see that the valve implant is a little bit lower. So in future, you may see for his rhythm, maybe he may go into block. Uh, can you have some comments from uh, Osman regarding the procedure? Gee, I missed some of the case, but I think um, there's more and more sort of data now for uh, subclavian versus carotid access. And I don't know if you mentioned that or was carotid, were carotids looked at as a possible uh, alternative access? Because in some cases, you can have a really nice straight shot down to the valve. And, um, you know, it is a cut down, uh, but uh, the stroke risk has been shown to be not higher. And, uh, you know, patients generally do quite well with it. I think Thank it was you. done at Sir. a very early stage, and at that time, obviously, our experience was not really that much in the carotid. So we thought always when you think of carotid, you will get worried about all those things. So we thought probably subclavian or axillary would be better and easier than that. But you are right. Now a lot of people, I don't know, Bilal is still there. He's gone, but he was saying that he's doing routinely all uh, carotids now. Dr. Shebaas Qureshi, sir. Yes, sir. In the history, I think you said that the patient had atrial fibrillation. He had atrial fibrillation. And uh, what would be your uh, anticoagulation if it, the patient was in sinus rhythm? And if the patient is in atrial fibrillation, what would be your uh, plan for anticoagulation and for 
how long lifelong anticoagulation in these patients? Mm. Well, sir, I think that's all. We'll treat it just like you know the treat treat our patient depends on the child vask and the has blood. So if he need lifelong anticoagulation, we would continue with that. And I I, I believe we did the, we did so. We kept the patient on single single antiplatelet and uh, uh, anticoagulation. So. Yes, at least. Okay, thank you. So, so previously it used to be thought that uh, the DOACs are not indicated for these patients because it's a prosthetic valve. So, but recently there's been data for a Pixaban that it works as well um, uh, for these valves if you have atrial fibrillation. Normally, currently the guideline is dual antiplatelet therapy. Uh, you try to get to six months and then single antiplatelet therapy. But if there's AFib, you can, there is data now that aspirin plus a DOAC is, is okay and covers the AFib as well as the valve. So Thank how, you. how do you close this axillary artery? Do you have problems with that? Or? Proglide, proglide and then uh, balloon. It's a proglide. Nicely. Yeah, it's nice. So ultrasound guide I get the access, usually you can take it the same way and proglides. If you're using the subclavian, then probably it's a cut down. I had done carotid, as Usman mentioned, it's probably a quicker course. The only thing is that majority of the equipment is hanging outside, so it's a bit of a different feeling for that. You should be aware that in subclavian axillary, you get more radiations to the operator, so uh, just be careful if you don't want to lose your hair too much. So, Okay, our next uh, uh, one, one question, please. Sir, is to, by to optimize the STAVI procedure, this, uh, recently Asan. three terms are used. Now, one is cusp overlap, which is, overlap, which is understandable. Uh, second one is commissural alignment. And Dr. the third Bittu. one is device parallax. So how can you, can you explain this? I think, uh, can I answer this, uh, Dr. Thaisaj, or is it running? So commissural alignment is very important. Uh, bear in mind that we are getting younger and younger patients now. So uh, there's a technique where your port should be at through clock position. You're going up, your top hat is towards the outer side of the angle. And when you're deploying it, the C arm is towards the either side because these posts come in front of it. Uh, so that's for the commissural alignment of it. Cusp overlap technique is mainly for the depth of it, as Thay Sagir mentioned as well. Uh, you will see our TAVI SS device. We have made a new first time ever uh, in the world a system, an app, where it can tell you that how the S curves are worked. Uh, we are presenting it in a bit, so probably we'll go into that detail in a bit. Uh, Dr. Bilal Murad, are you there? Dr. Bilal Murad? Sir, so may I have a question? Uh, can, you, can you have comments regarding this case by auxiliary approach? Uh, yes. So, you know, I think uh, in the initial stages when we started our tablet program for alternative access, we also did subclavian. Uh, it turns out that the vascular surgeons actually uh, preferred the carotid approach. Um, the uh, subclavian is a lot more fragile artery that has a higher risk of dissecting. So if you ask the vascular surgeons about their preferences, they actually would prefer the carotid. They have much more better control over it. It is a little bit more superficial um, and uh, it has a more direct approach. Uh, so in our uh, program, uh, you know, I think I would say maybe about 2% of our patients are, are uh, alternative access now because at least with the availability of the peripheral shockwave balloon, uh, peripheral arterial disease also has become such an easy thing for us to fix now. If the arteries are big enough and they're just diseased with calcium, uh, using a shockwave pretreatment and then putting a transfemoral approach uh, is, works beautifully. And if that's not an option at all for any reason, then our preferred approach has been um, carotid. So we actually haven't done a transgeotic, apical, or subclavian in probably about six, five years now. Okay, thank you. So I think as your program grows, it'll probably be something that will be naturally evolved in, uh, in your program as well. Thank you. Now I would like to ask Dr. Ardan Varsan uh, for his transcable TAVI case. Dear moderators and colleagues, the previous case was the, I think, first case of the Pakistan. This is the first transcable case of Turkey. We did it two years ago. The patient is 83 years old male. Uh, he had two times uh, bypass operation have frequent heart failure admissions. GFR is slightly decreased, BNP is uh, high. Uh, he has uh, right bundle branch block. Echo demonstrates low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis. Ejection fraction was 38. 
on coronary angiography, we found uh, all the native vessels were occluded and bypass grafts were patent. For CT pre-evaluation, we had a succular abdominal aortic aneurysm, 3.5 centimeter. Both iliac arteries were occluded. Celiac trunk was occluded. Right renal artery was stented and had extensive classifications and plaques in both common cavity and subclavian arteries. This was the CT evaluation. Uh, as you can see by the row, the left subclavian had a, a calcific plaque at the ostium. And uh, the uh, valve area and uh, length, uh, as you can appreciate here. In 3D volume rendering, we had occluded both iliac arteries and extensive calcifications. So at this point, which vascular route should we use for this patient? We didn't want to use transfemoral because both iliac arteries were occluded. We didn't want to use transaortic because the patient had bypass operation. At that time, we didn't have a balloon expandable valve in our institution. And uh, both subclavian and common cutted were extensively diseased. So uh, we do peripheral interventions uh, in our center. This technique is some kind of transfemoral and fully percutaneous. It, it requires uh, a combination of structural, peripheral, and coronary techniques. You do tower, you do vascular closure, you use an occluder device, and you use some techniques for aortocaval crossing. Uh, as uh, most of you know this slide, this cartoon, Grimbaum descri described it in the United States. And the basic physiology is retroperitoneal pressure is always higher than vena cava pressure. So if you uh, occlude the aortic hole, uh, you never had a, a retroperitoneal bleeding. Uh, this is the coronal uh, view of our patient. We had the circular aneurysm with moral thrombus. These are the distances to aortic bifurcation and renal uh, stent. This is the sagittal view. We preferred to puncture the uh, number one point uh, first. If we are unsuccessful, the bailout point, uh, puncture point was uh, in the aortic aneurysm, the second point. We described them according to the lumbar vertebras. We had ultrasound guided puncture for right cameral vein. We placed two progolized preclosure. Left femoral vein was uh, punctured and it's closed with figure of eight stitch. Left brachial artery was punctured again with ultrasound. We decided to do manual compression and we always use sedation. We didn't give general anesthesia. What we did, we do not have a piggyback wire converter in Turkey, so we used mother and child technique. This is the shortened mammary guiding catheter, Navicross catheter inside and fine cross, and we had a Conquest Pro 12 uh, in it, and we cut the distal tip uh, one centimeter, and we electrified uh, the back tip of the guide wire with electro cutter pencil, we used 550 watt cutting mode. These are our estimated uh, orthogonal projections for the first point and the second point. And we decided to use Medtronic Evolute. You need a grid uh, toolbox for this. It's technically not uh, difficult, but you need so much material and a bailout strategy. This is the femoral puncture. This is the simultaneous arthrogram and venacavagram. We placed the guznex snare from the left brachial artery, and we tried to centralize it in orthogonal projections. First, we tried the uh, calcium-free window above the AAA. We easily crossed the venacava wall, but we couldn't cross the aortic wall. You see it looks like in the vessel, but it easily slips uh, next to the aorta. And you can adjust it in pr different projections. And finally, we decided to puncture the uh, AAA. It was very easy. And 
we coat the tip of the guide wire with a snare and simultaneously we pushed and pulled the guide wire towards the arm. We couldn't advance fine cross catheter, so we did balloon dilations, 2 2.5 balloon catheters. As you see, it's very hard and ruptured. Afterwards, we advanced fine cross, nav cross catheters. For the sake of time, I am being quick. And we placed a backup wire, uh, guide wire. We first dilated with the uh, dilator. Afterwards, we advanced the long sheet. The uh, length of the sheet is very important. And we did a uh, self-expandable valve implantation without pre or post dilation. And we only had trivial aortic regurgitation. Then we took all the material out and uh, pulled back the sheet. We advanced edgeless deflectable sheet and advanced ADO1 uh, occluder. We released the distal part, pulled back. As you can see, we have artocaval fistula, it's estimated. Again, artocaval fistula, but not bleeding to retroperitoneal space. We released it. And this is the position of the occluder. And immediately on the table, we had a complete hemostasis. And this is the control CT of the patient. What kind of difficulties do I have encountered this in this uh, case? We had so many tools at the same time. We couldn't find long sheets. We didn't have exchange length CTO wires. We didn't have short guiding catheters. We, all of them, we did some homemade uh, decisions on this uh, material. We prepared the bailout hemostat strategy. We had over the wire balance covered stance. Uh, you, you should uh, absolutely do IV protamin before closure. We had a surgical backup. Uh, as a final word, I can say transcaval access is a viable option for challenging tower cases. It requires skills and knowledge on structural, peripheral, or coronary interventions altogether and planning and CT evaluation and choosing the right place to puncture is the more, more, most important step. Thank you very much. Okay, Ali Radak, can you have some comments? One or two comments, then we'll take yeah. the next talk. So, um, uh, first of all, excellent case uh, done by yourself. Uh, the trans cable, because the, uh, as it was mentioned, if you've got a peripheral shock wave, although in your case it was too much calcified, then uh, we used to use, in order to keep all transfemoral, we used to use peripheral shock wave balloons and create space and then go up. Uh, Transcaval needs, actually it needs to be in a center which has uh, uh, got expertise in closure of that uh, devices, like you've got a peripheral expertise in your yes. center. So that's why, I think uh, in every centers, it's not necessary that every center masters in every technique. I think a transfemoral plus one other technique uh, for each center and they can refer to the other center. That was the case in UK as well, so that will be great, but again, excellent case. Okay. Usman? So, is, I think, fantastic uh, outcome. Your choice of uh, position, position one versus two, I think one uh, for the, for the trans cable puncture, I think the degree of calcium there was probably too much to get the wire through, and also the separation was at the, uh, uh, upper end of what is possible and I think uh, uh, kudos to you for going through the aneurysm and it turned out great but uh, you know looking at the CT scan the dead calcium and the separation between IVC and aorta uh, was was probably the reason why that wasn't uh, a suitable suitable uh, point to cross use the same uh, technique for the basilica as well so it's a good technique to learn if, if they are doing the basilica techniques for the like while using the cartridges and to pierce through the leaflets now we have the innovation from pakistan by mohammed suleiman and f for f from uh, pic peshawar team Otavi. 
Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I'll be presenting a very interesting innovation, Tavi Assist. Uh, it is developed by Structural Heart Team at Peshawar Institute of Cardiology, which is led by Dr. Ali Raza. As you all know, that Tavi is a minimally invasive procedure to replace aortic wall. And this Tavi device need to be implanted at a particular target depth. If we are too deep, it can lead to conduction abnormalities. And if we are too high, the valve can pop out and embolize. So these leave uh, uh, the operator with a very minimal margin of error, just three to five mm. So in order to achieve this very precise depth, the Tavi device need to be implanted in a view where this annulus appear in a single line, in a single plane, just perpendicular to the fluoroscopic projection. All those angles in which this annulus appear in a single line can be denoted with the help of an S curve shape graph. This red line here shows all those angles, a pair of angles, in which this annulus, annulus will appear in a single line. Not only that, we also need this Tavi device to be in a single plane. So if both this device and annulus are in a single plane, then only we can assess this depth accurately. But there are a few problems with this. The first one is that the operator usually remember few angles like three cusp view or cusp over layer technique, and he cannot remember this whole graph by memory. So deviation from this is very common as operator usually rotate its machine into LA or other projection for confirmation of other parameters. The second problem is the, the problem of parallax. So what happens that these self-expendable devices tend to position itself along the outer curve of IOTA. So this lead to a different plane of this device than the annulus. So if you position your machine to bring annulus in plane, the device will go out of plane. Uh, if uh, you rotate your machine to bring device in plane, the annulus will go out of plane. So this is the problem of parallax. The third issue is that the patient position during a CT scan and fluoroscopy is different, especially in obese patient. So this S curve, which we usually generate using the CT scan data, can, can have some errors. And it, there might be some discrepancy between this fluoro and CT data. So as per our patent search, we could not find any software which can solve all these problems in cath lab on table in real time. So here our, come solution, uh, our solution, Tavi Assist. So this software consists of two parts, actually. The one is Tavi Assist, which we install in a computer, and it is the main brain. And the second part is Fluoro Tracker. As the name suggests, we, this fluoro tracker is actually track the position of the C-arm gantry or this fluoroscopic machine. This is a mobile software, and we attach this mobile to the fluoroscopic gantry, and when it moves, it gives the current location of that uh, LA or uh, chronic cranial projections to over Bluetooth to this main software for further processing. In this video, as you can see, this fluoro tracker is attached to this C-arm gantry. When this is moving, it is sending the location of this particular angle to the over Bluetooth to this main software, where you can see on this graph there is a dot. It is moving and it is giving the current position. And this is the second part. The main brain is the Tavi Assist. It consists of multiple sub-modules. I will only dis discuss a few of them for the sake of time. So broadly, we can categorize the function in two categories. The first one is generation of that S-curve. We can generate this S-curve using CT scan data. All you need is any free software. Just get the lowest point, point of the cusp and get the x, y, z value, which any free software can give you. You take these values and put it into our software, and it will give you this S-curve shape graph. And if you don't like this graph because of the positional change or any other reason, you can also make this S-curve on the table using fluoroscopy data. All you need is to just adjust your angles in such a way that you see a single plane, just with a single click of button, that fluoro tracker will send the position and our software will make a graph for you. The second function is that nobody likes to read graphs, especially during a procedure. So we can also track this graph if required. So as you can see in this bench study, this is a phantom of aortic annulus. And we, our software has generated, using fluoroscopy data, this S-curve shape graph. At this particular moment, this dot is not on top of this S-curve. So our, our annulus is out of plane. Uh, sorry. Uh, can you play this video?
वीडियो प्ले कर दे सर सी वट हैपन्स वेन दिस डॉट when when the operator move the machine when this dot come on top of this s curve then you get uh, alignment of this annulus there is another problem too that problem of parallax in most of the patient the the uh, the, the tavi device and the aortic annulus are not in the same plane so two different plane means two different s curves the point at which these both line cross each other is the point when there is where is there is no parallax and this is called double s curve technique it is invented by dr nicolas piazza as you can see at this moment the dot is not on top of these any line so at this point both structure were out of plane so when this dot come on top of this cross cross point the parallax has been removed and both structure are in plane so this is the most ideal position to deploy the wall and for those of you who don't like graphs we also provide this opportunity where you import this ct scan data the segmented 3d iota and and import into our software the software will show you this patient ct 3d rendered uh, uh, iotic route and when you move the machine it will show you the current position of this iotic route so the question is does it really work these are very busy slide but let me quickly tell you here that uh, The, for the tracking of c arm position using fluorotrochy uh, uh, the, the fluoroscopy the uh, the mean angle error was 0.2 degrees and for the generation of s curve and double s curve and tracking it tracking it the error was again less than 1 degree so it was very precise it very precisely generated and track that is s curve this is our comparison with other software so in summary our software is different from the other ones because they are all used for free procedure planning while the other software is used during the procedure for real time assessment of all these parameters this is our patent information which we have recently filed in us and this is our future goal first of all we are, we want to make a complete ct scan analysis software at the current in the market for example the three mensio etc are very costly Three months ago, cost twenty-three thousand pound per year. We also want to integrate into artificial intelligence into our software, where this 3D CT data will be fused over top of this fluoroscopy. For and we will also incorporate other important marker like coronary ostia, membranous septum, its depth, and commissioned alignment in real time. Thank you very much. So, just to add on to this, so. Uh, all the software coding and everything has been done in the PIC. Uh, our center is on a year and a half old, and it's the blessings of Professor Afi Sab who's sitting here that we have achieved all this. And uh, only five cases are selected every year in TCT throughout the world, and hopefully uh, we'll be presenting this in TCT in the coming future as well. Thank you. Uh, that's a fantastic achievement in a short time, and it's something that's really useful. I think we all struggle with uh, the coplanar angle, the uh, cusp overlap angle, the parallax. I mean, you know, it's uh, uh, we're not fortunate enough to have sapien anymore, so you know that takes care of a lot of those issues. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about how you've used it in cases, and like, you know, what what sort of the workflow is? How do you incorporate it into the case? Sure. So there's a software that is on the laptop, and then this uh, gadget we, which we attach to the gantry of the fluoroscope. So, what is does that? Sometimes, as you would know, that in order to rule, lose this parallax, we take a lot of pictures. Whereas this device automatically tells you once your valve is inside the aorta, that which angle do you need in order for this to be achieved? That both your plane of the valve and your uh, artificial valve in the same plane. So it tells you exactly the angle, let's suppose RAO caudal 20, uh, 15, something like that. So it saves you from that. So there is only one thing, so the, uh, the device attached to the gantry and the software on the laptop, so it automatically connects to the Wi-Fi system. So in my mind, when I'm doing these, the coplanar or the three cusp angle and the uh, non-parallax angle is always different. Yes. Right. But you're saying that there's some angle and exactly. relation at which they're both aligned. So, so this is the work which was done by Nicola Piazza in Toronto, and it, that's why this S-curve came into place. Mm -hmm. 
and we have sent this to him as well, so he, he's very uh, pleased with this as well. So what is this? there's always a point where your valve will be in plane and your uh, artificial valve and uh, both native valve will be in plane. And as we did in benchmark testing, there's always because we've created 3D models of the, the through 3D printers of a patient, and then we did it through the benchmark testing, it, it they always comes up with one single point. And we are going to sell it uh, through the Shark Tank and TCT as well. So. Excellent. So, any questions from the audience? Um, uh, does this text into account of uh, new um, commissional alignment? Uh, yeah, it's it, because what it does that your commissure, once you do commissural alignment, after that it creates that angle. So, okay. once you're done through that phase, uh, then it creates the angle and gives oh. you the angle. And does it add time to your procedure? Or it's actually cutting down. It, it cuts day? the time. It, it cuts the time it. because it yeah. cuts the contrast. It cuts the time because you're not taking any angles to remove that parallax, which question was asked as well. So it cuts a lot of time. That's and so we, we don't do uh, any GAs. We don't do any TEs. We don't do any pacemakers. Uh, we do minimal invasive. The patient is walking after four hours. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I think most centers have moved away from GA and TE um, as well. So. I think uh, uh, in wrapping up the session, we've had... Um, uh, just a small question, please. Um, currently, okay, good morning, okay, everyone. Uh, great to be here today again. Um, just a simple question. You have all of these angles being done. This is such an expensive procedure being done. And by generations in, in cardiology in Pakistan, we are using only a single plane. We are not using biplane machines. What is your take on the biplane? Because how frequently have you seen this being done internationally on a biplane? Or do you think that biplane will not add to your uh, whole vision development? Because for some reason, biplanes are not taking off over here while the pediatric cardiologists are crying their heads out that they need a biplane. So we are lucky to have a biplane machine as well. Uh, but as you mentioned, I think the significance of using it, if you are taking an angiogram during the procedure, I have moved away from doing angiograms for these patients if the CT is normal. So uh, if you are not doing that, it adds very little to it, I think, in my personal opinion. I don't know, Swan, what does he think about it? So I think a biplane is very useful. It does cut down on contrast, especially in congenital cases, right? And the reason the pediatrics want to use it is because they're dealing with small kids and they want to minimize the contrast. What's very useful is rotational angiography. You take one aortic root shot and you can get basically a 360 degree view and you can analyze it for your coplanar angle and everything. I think more imaging always helps. We are moving more towards hybrid labs as the procedures between cardiac surgery, vascular surgery and cardiology uh, become more and more integrated. So I think um, probably we're gonna move in that direction more and more. Um, and not so much biplane because so much is already planned out on the CT scan. You know, you already know a lot of the angles, uh, you know, the anatomy. So um, that's, you know, we're looking more towards a hybrid lab room than, than getting a biplane. But a hybrid lab is a totally different ball game. You're talking something totally different. Now over here, what you're actually talking, what I'm trying to get to understand is because we are thinking of getting this thing going in our own institute. But my limiting uh, thought process is that a lot of people internationally now are thinking of going biplane. What is your take on that? Is that the right approach? So, Will you have a better uh, uh, fall area established in a biplane? Because otherwise, when you're jumping from one side to the other, trying to establish uh, your positioning from two different angles. So that hasn't been, that hasn't been my uh, experience, and I don't think so. I don't know, at least in the US, uh, people are not moving towards biplane. They're using single plane, large panel. Um, we want to, you know, sometimes there's TE because you're using the same room for mitra clips. And so the second arm kind of makes it cumbersome. So I don't know what you, your thoughts so, are about So you game. don't need a biplane for TAVI. You can do a TAVI program with the monoplane only as Usman mentioned for congenital heart disease. Uh, but yes, if your question is that biplane for TAVI and structural heart, uh, no, not for mitral clip, not for LA appendage closure, not for TAVI. Thank you. But for, TAVI, for, for mitral clip, in any case, you actually basically are doing it under uh, uh, transesophageal guidance. Yes, so that's, that's a totally different ball. So, so if you're a structural program, you don't need a biplane for it. You can do it on a single monoplane machine. Perfect. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Mayadeen. Any other questions from the audience? So we'll wrap up this morning's structural session. Uh, I think some great cases, live cases from AFIC, um, excellent talks, and some exciting AI technology uh, that we're looking forward to further updates on. And it's uh, good to see the community growing and uh, more and more expertise coming in. Uh, and it's a good time uh, for cardiology and, and structural heart disease in Pakistan. So thank you, everyone. And I'm uh, going to hand over to whoever is doing the next session. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Dr. Raza. I'm one of the moderators today, along with uh, uh, Dr. Voskan Ayrton, who is with me, and uh, I will be uh, helping him. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, invite the panelists for today. Uh, I would like to invite Professor Sean Leon Chen from China to please come and come here, and uh, he will also help me in, in the moderation for this important CTO sessions, and the live cases are ready in AFIC, so we will be uh, going to AFIC very soon, uh, Professor Shaolin Chan. Then I will request Professor Tanvir Rabb from the United States. Professor Tanvir Rabb, he will be coming just he's good, uh, in, in two minutes. Then uh, can we uh, uh, request uh, Nihat Kale, please, from Turkey, and it's Dr. Said Alam, Professor Bilal Muhyiddin and Sayyid Tahir Ali Shah and Professor Abdul Samad and Professor Khawar Kazmi. Please come and have your chairs. And in a, in a minute, we will be starting. If the uh, cath labs are ready from AFIC, can we go to the cath labs, AFIC cath labs, please? Hello, Cath Lab. In the meantime, we'll also invite, we have online uh, panelists, Dr. Uh, Bilal Murad, Dr. Sulman Arain, Sajid Dhakam, and Asad Pathan. If they are online, please join us. And we are going to start the uh, next case. Is there anyone ready in the Cath Lab? Can we check, please? OK, that's fine. No problem. Take uh, your time. Good. So they are just uh, uh, changing over the uh, case. All right. Uh, Cath Lab, AFIC, can you hear me, Dr. Raza from, from, uh, the, from Serena Hotel? Omar, can you hear me? We don't have the audio connection, please. Can we someone, someone check? <coughs> AFIC, Cath Lab, can you hear me? Yeah, I think probably they're connecting the headgear. by the time they are connecting, so we, we can actually discuss, ask with Professor Chen, how, how many CTO cases you, you do in your university hospital in, in China? Oh, thank you. I don't know exact number in China, but in my center, every year, almost 500 to 800 CTO cases. Very nice. Mm. And you are doing all anti-grade, retrograde. Thank you. All right, Have we, are we connected with the AFIC?
Hello, Umar, can you hear us? Please let me know when you when you get connected. So Hello, AFIC Cath Lab, can you hear us? Any luck? No, I don't think there is anyone on the... I think some problem. Yeah, we can do if you want. Uh, we have something. Is there any, if there are any questions from the audience, like CDO, regarding CDO technique? I think probably in, uh, how many of you is, is, are doing more of CDOs? And is it, uh, uh, Professor Chen, in your lab, you do more retrograde or, or anti-grade? What is the incidence? Yeah, I think this is a very challenging question. You know, uh, still there are two parties, anti-grade and retrograde. So the selection of approach depends on the anatomy. So usually from my hand, 85% from anti-grade, only 15 to 20% uh, by retrograde approach. I know last year we did finish our nationwide consensus about CTO. So almost 46 by retrograde. So now the trends in China is that for young generation of intervention cardiologists, most of them prefer to do retrograde approach. All right, okay. Thank you. And Professor Bilal Mahyuddin, your PIC uh, data of um, your experience. At, at Punjab Institute of Cardiology, um, we are fortunate we are doing both anti and retrogrades, but of course our retrogrades are not that many. Um, as you all know from the NATPE, it makes the decision what you need to do. Somehow or the other, our anti-grade success is very good. We are hitting nearly 80 to 90 percent into, into the anti-grade uh, territory. So that is the reason probably we are not doing that much retros. On top of it, we have got an anti-grade success even with lesions which are like about 35, 40 uh, millimeters long. So in that way, we are quite lucky that uh, uh, the, most of the problems we have. As far as the rest of the things are concerned, there is always a cost constraint. And uh, in the world of rational therapeutics, when you have to weigh the two uh, benefits, it becomes a challenge to decide which way you need to go. But at Punjab Cardiology, we do both anti and retro. But retro is far less. Bilal, what I mean to say that there is a subset of patients, like people with 
more than 20 millimeter of calcified lesion which you are unable to even visualize from the whenever you are giving the anti-grade injection. Calcification, which you call swear, these are the uh, these are the subsets which I think need retrograde approach rather than anti-grade approach, because maybe the complication rate will be higher in the anti-grade. This is what I want to know uh, from uh, the expert uh, sitting uh, here. Professor Harun sir, because if you have got the right instruments and the right training of retrograde, would it not be better to go for retrograde rather than uh, the anti-grade approach? Professor Harun, you're absolutely right. But when you are using bio-injections and you're giving sequential L injections, those lesions which are usually not that clear, they start becoming clear. Our experience is that whenever we give dual injections, we are always able to delineate very clearly, okay, they, mostly they, very clearly, yeah. how good or bad the lesion is. Why do you have a First, do you want to take the pictures? Yes, okay. I'm, I'm telling them. So, you can open for me a fine cross and a run through. Thank you, sir. Alright? Okay. Hello? And, and Hello, if, and uh, if it's going to interrupt, yeah. there is something okay, we want. Sorry, and, and if for some reason you are not, then of okay. course there Let's is a reason. A but by and large, because now oh, see, see. the yeah, have, have have tools that are available, okay. the wire okay. strengths okay. that are available, the yeah. micro right, that are available, uh, we are right able press, to usually go through the anti-grade. And as it is, the world data suggests that now nearly 70% is done anti-grade. And as far as the rest of them are concerned, that becomes a whole game. Are we are we connected to AFIC? That's okay. Can you hear, hear us, please? No, right. Uh, please? Who is the? Me, are you? Uh, we expect uh, Omar. Omar, are you here in the lab? All right. A bit less. A bit less. 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 Are you? Less. Are you? Less. Are you? Less. Omar, okay. Gorkan, are right. you? Let's take the right press. Right press. Inject the right. Sorry. Can you please no. tell the less, history less. of the history of the patient? Right. Okay. What is the? Uh, sir, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can yes, can you please introduce yourself because we are seeing... Okay, yes, uh, sir. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, I'm Dr. Bilal from FIC. Uh, Spearheading uh, Dr. Rosley here. Okay, if, uh, let me just introduce the team. Uh, we have Arshad, we have Dr. Sada. And first I'll uh, show you the case and then uh, we can discuss. Okay, can I see the pl uh, slides? In fact, the, the fine cross. Uh, okay, by the time slides. you get the... Okay, yeah. uh, the slide... Re okay, if, go on please, yes. Uh, sir, can you see the slide now? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay, the patient on table is a 75 years old diabetic hypertensive and now presented with the uh, CCS3 angina for the last 10 months. Uh, previously, he had an anterior wall MI in 2016, uh, underwent thrombolysis, and subsequently, he had PCI to LED uh, with a 2.7529 deaths and an insert 3.514, and another one in the CERC with 312. Now, uh, this time when he presented, next slide please. Yeah, his ejection fraction is 35% with uh, some antoceptal wall hypokinesia. Uh, the segments are 7 by 10 viable of the LED and the CERG and the RCL viable. So we did perform an angiogram and uh, the case is on the table. We've just taken the pictures and we'll uh, let you see the pictures. All right, so uh, this Rosalie here, thank you very much for having me. And uh, interesting problem because now we have a stenosis at the ostium and uh, at the same time uh, it reconstitutes close to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, the stand where it was placed before. So let's have a picture. This is, can we play this? Yeah, uh, we can. Uh, can I just hold for one minute? Rosalie, we have CTO expert here, so can I request Professor Shao Liang Chen to please come and uh, moderate uh, the, this case? Professor you want Chen. to talk inside? Yeah. Okay. Right, so, so we, we, we now get, got the history, this patient with previous MI and, and some viability, 45% ejection fraction. Please go ahead with the, uh, with the case, and Professor Chen is here uh, for us uh, for, to discuss All right. this case. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can we play the first shot, please? Well, I'm not very yeah. Okay, so this is the APR. This is a, what we call the spider view, and you can see that it's from the ostium. Uh, there is, uh, from our earlier angio, um, diagnostic shots taken much earlier, there was a short stump at the ostium of the LED. Um, next view, please. 
So I've taken a contralateral shot. It's from the radial for diagnostic right and uh, seven French uh, from the femoral approach. So there you can see that it's coming from the, uh, uh, you know, the CTO is from the ostium. There is probably a, really a small stump. So what do you think, uh, the panelists, what do you think um, about the issue? Yeah, uh, I think the operator is Dr. Rosli, right? Hello. Is Dr. Rosli? Hello. Hello. Okay, Hello. Rosli, good morning. So I think we need yep. to uh, take comments from panelists. So let's start from Dr. Tamarod. So uh, this is an ISR. Yeah. Yeah. The vision length is not that long. You got a stump, and you can see a micro channel. So I think the first approach would be probably to go try an anti-grade stick and see and try different wires and see if you can cross it. I think you'll be able to cross it anti-grade. Yeah. So before uh, before the procedure, uh, Rosalie, can you tell tell us what the guiding and the first line of wire to use? Yeah, uh, this guide, this is a one thing. This is a uh, yeah, uh, EBU, sorry. EBU guide. EBU, so you And this is a 3.5. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, what, a What's the wire? Yeah, it's ready. So what we did was uh, we got the fine cross uh, to go down, and I use a normal standard wire. Okay. Which and, wire is uh, this? Now, what wire are you using? That one was a normal wire. That was a uh, run through floppy. And uh, I'm going to use a Conquest Pro, and this is 9 grams. Uh, the reason is, uh, in the beginning, I thought there was a stump that I may want to use a filter and so on, but it's too close, and I think uh, a soft wire will not uh, be useful, so I'm going straight to a, a much steeper wire. Okay, and, ge uh, and geographically, there is a very clear anti-grad channel. So let's ask uh, our panelists, so what's your first line of wire? I think over here I'll try to... The Mongo wire and see if it will go across it or not. I don't know if that's available here or not. It's a softer wire. Try that before I go to a stiffer wire. Mm. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I've not have uh, Mongo wires uh, in our side, but it, I hear it's very good for uh, you know some intimate packing and so on. Uh, I would prefer Pilot 200 or Gaia 30 for the uh, the first line. Okay, please. Uh, I prefer progress or conquest. Uh, maybe uh, it, it need to angle it cutter, yes, for yes. example, yes. super cross yes, angle. Yes, uh, yes. Also, if you available IVUS, uh, IVUS guided penetration for uh, uh, reasonable for this patient. Uh, maybe if uh, it, it is a hard to penetration, uh, dual lumen cutter also another okay. option. Capture. Okay. Let's well, um, by the time my turn has come, he's already gone through, so he has done it with the hard wire as it is. You see, the only real not trick really. about this thing is that you do not want to go yeah, subintimal. And in case you go subintimal, the hard wires really travel very fast in the subintimal space. So, and uh, my, my, actually, my question was uh, that. Should you have a support? Because many times people use a support to increase the, uh, the pressure of the tip. So should you have a support a balloon over there? Will that make a difference? Rosalie? Okay, yes, sir. Yeah, I think, Congratulations. Yeah, I think it would. But it, no, no, I, I, I don't think we're in. <laughs> I think uh, the support wire will be good. I tested first. No, it's not in, Shaldang. Uh, it's not in yet. So uh, what's in wire? I want to says... use it. So what's the wire? Yeah, that's you a conquest pro. Okay, conquest pro. Conquest pro. Okay. Let's go to the first shot before this. Mm. I, I said that it's not in because uh, the AP quarter before. So you have you have plus, taken conquest yeah. pro nine grams, right? Yeah. Plus. Yes. So plus. Usually, usually for any city of its anti grade One more. So personally, I like to One use uh, field ST or field um, FC. One FC. more. They will be very easy to get into the channel. Like, and also, if like, we like. use a very stiff wire yeah. like uh, Congress huh? Pro, we need multiple wheel, multiple injections right. to make sure. So, minus really minus. True miles so, please, what's your comment? My wire will be uh, for anti grade wire Are escalation. We'll start with pilot 150. Uh, pilot 150. Pilot 150, and then if it is Sorry. not crossing, then we'll yeah. go to Gaia it's second, and then uh, Congress the right. Pro. Okay, wait, please. Uh, Pro 9 or 12. Oh, ready. Okay, ready. So, Dr. Rosalie, did you uh, need to inject RAO cranial? Uh, I used uh, RAO and AP cranial. Mm, 
Okay. So, okay, I think it's in. Yeah. You want to check? Yeah, check. So, not why you're in this stand, right. in the right. hoodie stand. Okay. So, right. safe for it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, fine. Okay. Safely. So, I'm going to try to change over to um, a softer wire, trying to get the micro capital lower down. Um, no difficulty. Yeah, you can see the micro capital does come down. I mean, the wire uh, is coming up. So, I'm very careful with the Conquest Pro. You don't want to cause any dissection. Okay. Uh, so but never mind. Sometimes for, for CTO lesion, if the CD wire successfully recognizes the lesion, the weaker two options, one is easy change, and one is don't change the CD wire. So, for, uh, for example, in this case, there's a very, very mm -hmm. strong difficulty to put the micro case in, right? So also we can, uh, can use a 1.5 or even 1.25 volume to pre-dilate. After that, it would be you very that smoothly to use the change Y. Because uh, it's a complex flow, so it's very okay. stiff. So it should be always uh, very careful this about Okay, trapping balloon, please. 2.5? Yeah, 2.5. 2, 2 5, please. So the wire went down. I didn't want to push the wire too, too low, but in this case, the uh, fine cross couldn't cross. Um, so, I, we are going to trap this wire with a balloon and we're going to use, um, sorry, trap the balloon and we're going to use a small balloon to try to open up before we change the, um, the uh, But, but, but uh, do, you need, do you need to use a small balloon because now since your micro catheter has already gone through, so you already have done no, no. A, a small balloon job? No, no, the micro catheter did not go through, so we're going to use a small, uh, you know, small balloon for that. Yeah, also... Uh, if the micro catheter would have gone through, I would be comfortable using a 2.0 and even a 2.5 uh, balloon, but in this case, it didn't. So we are going to trap, and we're going to use a small balloon to open up the CTO, and uh, we'll see. It, it didn't go through. Also, Dr. Rosalie, because the wire is in the position, so I suggest you can use a guided Zilla to support the pastoral balloon. Yeah, okay. Rosalie, we, uh, Rosalie, we don't use, uh, this is Bilal Mahuddin over here from Punjab Cardiology. Good morning. Yes, Bilal. How are you? Good morning. Great. Uh, we don't very well frequently use these strapping balloons over here. Mostly when we are using it, we use uh, the pressure device over there, the inflation device, and we maintain the pressure and do that trick. What is your take? Which one do you prefer? No, it's crossed. It's crossed now. It's crossed. It's out of the uh, left. Yeah. Oh, you got it. See. Put it aside. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see. Uh, let me just. Uh, pull, pull, pull. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fine now. All right. Okay. Going Sorry, up. What's the question again? You see, we don't very frequently use these strapping balloons over here. Okay. We usually strapping use balloon? the the inflation yeah. device, Total keep phase. the pressure up, and then use it. Fine. So, what is your yeah. take? How? Do, what? What is your common practice over there? For us, this is basically uh, economics. Okay, uh, what, what is it for? So, sorry, because I don't catch you in the terms of... Come on, let me be. Okay. Okay, let's have a one You see, whenever, whenever, you, whenever you're bringing the wire out oh. and you're changing... Oh, it's the inway uh, the, the, the in technique? Yeah. Oh, not for... I suggest for you... Can I have a small balloon? Please? Yeah, one one. One point oh. Yeah. I would not suggest for you to use the inflation or inway technique sure. when you have a soft uh, with stiff uh, wire because sometimes when you push, it just goes down and can cause uh, perforation. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. So, That's what I was I, in the terms of the safest, is still uh, using a uh, balloon trapping. Now, if I get a work, my workhorse wire to go down and I want to use an innovative te technique, I think that's fine because it's soft, but not in the beginning. And, and if you don't have a trapping balloon, do you use a regular balloon to do the trapping? Yeah, yeah. We, we're using a regular balloon, it's 2.5 balloon for, yeah. for trapping. It's semi compliant, 2.5, yeah. 15. Simple. It's a normal thing. Yeah, yeah we use two. Sometimes you use two point five for six French and three for seven. Yeah. And seven I, French. I, I, seven I don't French. do the inflation. Pull back with the CTOs. You can lose your wire, the wire wire position. But you also have the trap liner available in the, elsewhere that you use that because that helps in exchange. That also but for us, you see, it's all about economics at the end of the day. So oh, no, no, no. yeah, now it's yeah. at the edge. Pick it up. Okay, I'm taking this out. No, no, no. Can, can you give us a retrograde injection and show us the tip we'll of the wire? Okay, I think we did this now, but uh, we can take one more. Can we shoot the right, please? Yeah. Or anything else? You want to take another one? The right one. Okay, the, uh, picture with the right ready. Right, huh? Yeah, this okay, wire shoot still please, in the All right. Okay, I think we're in. Yeah, very clearly. 
and well, you well, know well, I, I I usually check in two views but uh, in this case it felt that uh, it was uh, it was in the right lumen but sometimes if you're not sure please check in two lumens and this is where some, you can see that it can cause PVCs you got to be very careful okay, still some difficulties in flip yeah going up sometimes the chain will two four one ten yeah and the support where down so, Rosalie, what was the feeling of the wire when it went through? Was it a uh, uh, pop-in or was it just a smooth oh, run-in? No, it just uh, soft and it went through and uh, there was no pop to it down. But, you know, with the uh, Conquest Pro wires, you or Convenza, as you call it, uh, there's no Come feel on, to it and uh, you've got to be very careful because it does go down. down. And uh, you may be out of the uh, vessel. Okay. Out, up. <laughs> no, 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 no. You'll be here. You'll be here. Uh, now we have the Turkish uh, experts here as well, Dr. Uh, Wallström. What is your experience in this case? And any comments or any you want to yes. ask, Rosalie? Yeah. He had he had a perfect crossing coordination. Okay, I so think the micro the didn't go that's through, that's so we should. Dilate the yeah. vessel, exchange with an extra yeah. support right. guide okay. wire, oh, good, and good. it's better to do IBUS for this patient to good. learn the mechanism of the restenosis. Probably it's mal opposed or under expansion we have. So usually I keep this until yeah. I change over. Okay. Okay, I think you can see the flow. Can you play back that short, uh, the uh, flow capture, please? Right. So you can see the flow down. As usual, lots of prayers before a live case. Microcatheter, please. Yes. G. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, but as I said, uh, the stump was too Shopping short. Uh, that uh, I think it's too soft. Even Gaia's, you may have it, but uh, Gaia has a fixed tip. Uh, and it's only at the tip where it's uh, curved to about 28 degrees. So sometimes it doesn't, doesn't catch caught, doesn't some, catch uh, the stump. So I believe in this case, uh, a, a stiffer wire where it's more you can uh, control the curve and also it's more steerable would be a better place. Okay, trapping? Better, uh, better wire to trapping. use. Wait, wait. Yes, but please. to uh, emphasize please. that you need to check in two different views before uh, you, you, you know, uh, to ensure that you are in. Because otherwise, uh, you may think that you are in one wait, view, wait, but wait, the wait. other view is not. Yes? Rosalie, which microcatheter did you use? Yeah. Which yes. microcatheter did you use? Uh, this is uh, a fine cross. Yeah, fine, fine. You're going up? Oh, Actually, my choice nowadays uh, is uh, mainly with... Um, no, this is the balloon. This is the microcat. Oh, my forget yeah. sorry. It's uh, uh, usually caravel. Uh, for control after, I tend to use uh, turn pipe because I find that the control is much, much... Yeah, why is out? Why is out? Okay. It's okay. So, so the uh, Yeah, then... So we're pushing, pushing the uh, catheter until you feel resistance. That's where you add the balloon. Mm. And then you're going to go down. Okay. Going down. Down. So you must make sure that the wire, the balloon is in the catheter. Sometimes the balloon is out of the catheter. It's not going to uh, trap. Yes. Okay. In it. Okay. So you've got to be very careful. If you're not, you might lose the, your wire position. So the balloon must be inside the catheter. Okay. And you just push it until you feel a resistance. Okay, can I, can I have and then a once uh, you are there, then you can start to deflate your balloon. So, so, you, so you are you. going to use the change of wire? Yes, we are changing to... Uh, is it run through? Uh, the, the initial it, run through we use. It's a run through uh, wire. Show me the catheter, please. Yeah. Probably the run through is that, you know, it pulls back very quickly. Why don't you use a beam, BMW wire or a, a wiggle wire or something like that? Uh, in right support. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of uh, choice, uh, and I'm so used to this. Uh, so, like any wires, even CT wires, sorry. Uh, uh, it's what you. Not I come really, with. Once we successfully predilated the C2 segment on the, on the steel wire, you really do yeah, trapping right. immediately use the change of yeah. wire. You can upside upgrade That's the right. balloon diameter. Up there, you That's see it's right. very safe. Thank yeah. you. Can, uh, can I see the balloon? So any, Sorry. any comments? <laughs> very good. Okay. So let's have uh, some. Uh, yes. Just how, I have it. Uh, in this case, how the micro catheter was taken again uh, while the wire yeah, was the in the vessel? Was with trapping balloon technique? So, uh, yeah, actually, uh, you know, the trapping balloon technique is frequently used in my case level. But personally, yeah. I'm very trusted. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just yeah. call them. We'll use an iBest. Huh? iBest, ready, please. Sometimes there is a problem with the checking bonus system. Sometimes. Do you have any experience? 2.5, 15, compliant. Semi compliant. So How to take micro this, once it's out and you are taking it again in the vessel? With the, is it with trapping balloon? It's uh, not possible yeah. to take it. The wire will go in and create. No, normally, if you have to take the, it again, you, uh, I normally put an, a wire extender on behind of it. And once you have the wire extension, you are good. Or the other way is that if you really, uh, if you don't have a problem, then you take a long length wire, place that in, and then take your micro catheter in. That way you're more comfortable, you're right. more, more control environment. Regarding the arising of uh, micro catheter, uh, how do you compare the uh, caravel and fine cross or turnpike? Which one is more easy to cross? The micro catheters. Like the, uh, you can use the fine cross. Yeah, well, Rosalie, they are asking is that over here, which microcatheter would you prefer and which one, why? Uh, you took a fine well, cross, I, uh, why not anyone else? No, I use, uh, I, I like to use a Caravel. Caravel here was 150, so I said, uh, usually for NC grade, we use 135. And uh, when we use a Caravel, uh, the profile is so small, so it's uh, easy. The only problem about Caravel is, do you want to give up? The only problem with Caravel is you cannot twist, because sometimes when you twist, it might actually, uh, you know, shear off the tip, capture, down, that's good. Then. And uh, so you've got to be very careful, but the profile is so small. And uh, the other thing about uh, if you want to have better pushability, then uh, for better pushability, it would have to be like Corsair and even a turnpike. So in, when you want to manipulate them, the catheter is probably better with, uh, with uh, the other device. Now, the other thing of consideration is this. The profile of Corsair is big, so sometimes when you use a, b a balloon, you've got to use a balloon which has got uh, a smaller profile. So because if you have a balloon which is a bit bigger profile, you find that you cannot, you cannot push uh, two devices in. So that's the only thing that you've got to uh, be aware of uh, when you use uh, a Corsair. So Dr. Rossi, do you plan to... Dada we have speak? now the Corsair Pro yeah. Access, so that has a that is a no problem. Okay, we're going to give an injection for you on the left side. Yeah, do you plan to check yeah. IOS? Yeah, yeah I need to okay. ask all my panelists. Rosalie, there's a question yes. for over here that would you do an IVA study of this before deploying anything, to establish the left main anything? Obviously. So I we're going to I just open up an IVAS because we need to see the, um, you know, the stand for this, the nose or the wise. Because if it's the nose, uh, inside this nose is that we're going to use a drug for coated balloon and then most likely put in the stand until the ostium of the LED. So, and I, I think over here, we're going to help uh, see whether we can try to avoid stenting left main if we have got some distance and if the left main is not easy. Can I have another wire, please? Okay. Now, if I may just add a quick comment in there. Another Quality. question is that yeah. now that you have taken in a soft wire and you have that soft wire in, it's a very rud rudimentary question. Should you not have it into a J-tip prior to taking it in? This way, you are a bit comfortable if you have got a soft wire over there that now you will not have a perf over there. What is your take on a J-tip distally? I think the uh, one okay, is a safer wire in perforations. Wire. I mean, I've, uh, the wire was I've had very rare, and it was crazy rare. Shape. We have had a perforation even with a BMW. <laughs> yeah, no, it can happen with anything, but yeah. run through, yeah. run through yeah. relatively safe. I, I, I saw Bilal Murad uh, sitting in his uh, lab in USA. Bilal, do you have to any uh, comments over there? You know, I'm just going to make a, just a quick comment going back to the choice of the microcatheters. You know, what I find is that uh, when you have a calcified lesion or a segment of CTO, I think that it makes a difference. Caravel is not usually a good choice in those scenarios uh, because it's not very torqueable and uh, there are cases reported where the tip will actually come off. So I think in those scenarios, the uh, Corsair or Turnpike LP uh, is a much better catheter. However, when you're dealing with uh, an epicardial collateral, I think... Uh, Can you show the view forward, plus? Yeah, plus. plus. Today, in fact, I was doing an intent uh, CTO, uh, and after I had crossed it, the uh, 
the Corsair tip actually got completely messed up in the wire, got stuck in it. So I think that I find the Turnpike LP to be probably the most consistently performing. Now, later, now. Okay. Yeah. All right, never mind. Let's open an IBIS first. IBIS ready, please. So, Rosalie, you, okay, you deployed a yes, standard standard user, right? I took That's right. That. Okay. Now, why are you wiring the circumflex? What's, what's happening there? Mm. Is that for protective purposes? Uh, we are wiring circumflex uh, for two reasons. Number one is when we stand the left mean, we want to try and make sure that we protect okay. uh, the uh, circumflex, and it will also give us an idea to where the stent is being placed. Secondly, there's a lesion in the circumflex that we are now looking, seeing. So we are going to treat that lesion first uh, before we uh, stent in the, uh, put in the stent to the left main. And sorry, to the proximal LED. Okay, uh, right, uh, Rosalie, uh, is it okay if we just switch on to the other lab and please. come back and see your work, what you have and you have done? Please, please do. Right. Can we switch to the other lab? Dr. Uh, Umar Ghotkin is doing the uh, other case and he has started. Uh, please uh, switch on to lab please. two, please. When I do this. You hold, uh, Actually, for uh, this case, I think uh, the most oh, important thing to, to okay, identify okay. the ah, reason so you why RID stand total coding. So, so I think the intravascular image like is like very you know, important. That's a great mm. idea. Fine, I think we still have five minutes for the setup, the audio change, so you still have five minutes more. Uh, you can continue. Any question from the panelists? Any uh, it will be uh, whether uh, uh, question uh, from Mr. Rosley uh, whether yes. it will be provisional standing yes, from left man to LAD or sorry uh, there is a question from the panelists yes please go ahead uh, introduce yourself I'm Dr. Tyre Shah and okay. working as an uh, intervention yes. cardiologist at Quet Teaching Hospital Peshawar um, my question is whether it will be provisional from left man to LAD or just osteal nailing of the uh, LAD. So I hope to uh, just do the osteal LED. Again, it depends on the IVERS. If let's say we are quite free of uh, disease in the, and, and this, the left main is not disease, then yes, we'll try and see whether we can put until the osteal LED. Yeah, most of us uh, will not do a not nailing of the osteal because it's always black in the distal left main. Yeah, the, the, so, so if you yeah. try to nail yeah. that, you always have restenosis at yeah. the origin, generally at the origin of the, the, origin uh, of the LAD, not in the search. I was so ready, please. A lot of data that osteal nailing does not work. So my, my only debate about this osteal nailing many times is, was, and now since they're doing an IVUS, now if you're doing an IVUS, at this, which this level you will say yeah. this is significant? You know, you if you are, uh, what is the area that now if your uh, left main is seven? Uh, if you are you got a gap cutoff point, so are you four, four, four millimeters square for the LED uh, or less, and for left main, six or less. Yeah, yeah. so, but if, if your left main is like, at the osteal level, is like about eight, and at the level of LED, it is still about six and a half. So what will you talk about that? Will you call it significant or not? Leave it alone. You leave it alone. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, you see, there is a lot of discussion going on about the IVUS. Uh, Rosalie, well, do you have the facility of IVUS in your lab? Have you got the facility of IVUS? So we manual pull back, huh? Okay, do we... Yeah, uh, but, but that's an yeah. off-discussed uh, 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 issue. Most times or not, you know, I tend to stand across the surf. Okay, that's fine. But really, if, if you have got some distance, then you may want to try to uh, do the uh, austral LED. But you will have to expect that you will get uh, one or two mm of the stent into the left main. That's almost for, for, uh, for certain. Otherwise, you, most likely you are going to miss the osteum. Right, thank you. Uh, by the time, and, uh, that has to be accepted. By the time you uh, go on and finish the procedure, we are now going to the uh, second lab, which is ready. Can we uh, go to the second lab, please? All right, thank you. आपने करनी कैमरा शिफ्ट इस तरफ कर लें ये स्क्रीन दिखानी है ये वाली बिलाल आई वांट यू टू रीड द एंड एंड रिकॉर्ड द आईबर्ड ओके आई वांट टू अबाउट स्ट्रेस्टर्स एप्रोच डू यू प्लान टू यूज कटिंग पावर सम टाइम सम काइंड ऑफ कटिंग डॉक्टर रोज़ली हाँ सो वी आर हेलो आर वी ऑनलाइन do we can hear you? Can you hear 
Yes, sir, we can't hear you. Yes, Uma, we can hear you. This is Bilal here. Nadir, okay, how are you? This is, uh, doctor, this is Dr. Nadir from AFIC. So we have uh, lined up this case, who's a 57-year-old gentleman. He's an ex-smoker. He had uh, inferior wall MI in June 22. And uh, due to circumflex was the culprit lesion. And there was another lesion in the LED, which was fixed uh, during that procedure. So now he's having a class two in China and uh, the biochemical and the clinical profile is normal. So now we have got uh, Dr. Umar and his team with us. He'll introduce his team. Uh, so we have Dr. Sajad here, uh, Amir and uh, Abid uh, from AFIC. And now I hand it over to Dr. Umar. Yeah, thank you very much, Nadir. I'm very happy to be here. For after a long time, I miss uh, a fight seriously. Very, very happy to be here. It's very nice to be in, in, with friends. Um, so I, I, we have uh, Gizem from the Istanbul. He, she's working with me actively for CT operation. She, she's our nurse in Turkey. And uh, we will do this case with Nadir. So let me show you the case before we start. Next, please. Yeah. yeah, this is the right injection only. We have um, mid RCA occlusion. Uh, maybe it's occluded at the mid part. And next, please. And from the left Not system, the we angel. have nice collateral. We need to see the we angio. Have, you can't see the. Uh, have you seen the angio now? Yes. Yes, right. We have epicardial collateral directly, and, but we also septals. Uh, when we do bilateral injection, we see that the uh, CTO is short, maybe 10, 10 centimeters. So I think we have a good chance for anti-grade crossing, but of course, uh, we, may fail, we might um, fail. In that case, we can think about cross septals rather than this epicardial collateral, because if we use epicardial collateral, Patients may pain, may have pain during the procedure. We, we don't want it. And septals would be more safe for us. Right, Omar. Before you proceed, is it okay if we just get the expert comments from the experts? Uh, we have Dr. Sure. Oyed from, from Saudi Arabia, from Middle East, and he would like to uh, give his uh, opinion. Dr. Oyed, can we ask you to please uh, see how, what do you foresee in this CTO? Dr. Oyed, please. So, uh, first of all, uh, sorry for the technical issues I had earlier this morning. Um, it's nice to see all of you. Uh, nice to see you, Omer. Um, and uh, and uh, I agree with Omer. The, um, uh, that's a short uh, lesion, and this is never be helpful without the, the bilateral injections. So this clarified. The, 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 the strategy. So I agree with Omer to go um, with, uh, with the um, anti-grade approach uh, in the beginning from the get-go. Yes. Uh, Sean, what do you think? What are the chances of success in anti-grade in this patient? Yeah, I think they have a high a, a proportion of anti-grade success, successful anti-grade approach. It looks the proximal cap, it looks like a pretty long, but CT segment not too long. Yes, I think there is, we can see this long cross filling, and uh, the segment, as you said, is 10 yeah. uh, millimeter. And any other uh, uh, the chances of the chances the, of uh, uh, I have comment. Uh, yeah, left yes. men look uh, diseased very much. 80, 70 percent at ostium. Mm, is it any is trouble with the catheter or something wrong? Is it a spasm or Omar, what do you think? I can see something in the just uh, at the ostium of the LED. Very good observation. We didn't engage well. I think that's the reason. Let's see. Okay, test piece. Do you have any pre pictures if you have seen or? From left, uh, test piece. Okay, uh, spider, please. The, the pressure tracing, is it from the left or from uh, of, of the pressure tracings? Is it left or the right pressure tracings? Uh, let me check. The pressure tracing. Is it, uh, the, no, no the, the peak panel is the left. Yes. Okay, go, go ahead. Why do you have a wire in the LED? And, and uh, it's for safety wire because if yes, you have, I know, any 
So I think Anything I agree with you. Left system. This is our safety wire. Right, Omar. Uh, we, 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 we must get dissection or. And, and which wire are you taking into the right? Any wire is to stabilize the guiding cancer. Yes. Mm. Anyway, Omar, uh, okay. because in the interest of time, I think you should go ahead what you plan and please. Tell us what hardware are you using to open this? Uh, no, wait, uh, wait a CTO. second. You want to know what the osteo development is doing before you go further? Yeah. I yeah. think mm. if you already anticoagulated, wire down, just yeah. check the uh, osteo. Yeah, yeah. Right, the I, agree. Iris, I agree. Something like that. Also, you know, I have a comment about RCA CTO. If a CTO localized as a middle RCA, so usually we need a, a IL cranial. Uh, particularly for middle RCA CTO lesion with bridge collateral. So IO cranial is very important to spread the wire into the, the bridge collateral. Because if, if, if they go ahead according to the plan and they open the RCA, that will uh, perfuse the LED as well. Mm. So, uh, Umar, so please go ahead and do what the plan you have. And please uh, tell us what you are using for this. this volume. I don't hear it well. Also, it uh, looks... Dr. Ramukha Raja, uh, yes. we can't hear you clearly. Can you please increase the volume? Uh, can, we, can we increase the volume, please, because they can't... Over a, a simple question, that now that we have this left main question going on, um, is this a side hold uh, left main catheter, or this is a, st a standard catheter? No, 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 I don't no, see side hole. Yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. So we, we are working with, with Biradio today. All uh, two uh, catheter are seventh branch. In the left we have EB, left EBU without uh, without side hole, and for the right we have uh, LA one catheter. All right, and so we don't have any side hole for the uh, uh, left system. Right, you. Umar, you can, address, see, uh, you can address this left main uh, after you... You know, for the left, for the left system, we can, uh, we can, you know, let's focus on the RCA CTO now and we sure. will take care of the, the, the left system later on. What is you the know, wire? We will, have other, we will have other projections. If you have any suspicion, we will draw arrows and we will yeah. take care yeah. of it. Yeah, I think that is the... Now, let's focus for, for the right CTO now. Uh, so, uh, come back please, one last minute. Minus. Minus. So you are using implants, it's seven Minus. French, you said? Yes. yes. So from the right of the view, right. and then uh, minus. Yeah, you know, it's that for, is, is for the safety of the procedure, we should be sure about the left main ostium, I think. We, we may have trouble yeah. in the proceeding. Yeah. We, we must be sure yeah, the host is uh, normal. About the left page? Right? Yes, yes. I yes. Engage. No, no, we I can look at from spider view. Yeah, I think that's spider view, right? Show them spider view. No, I think one important point is that it looks like yeah, right gunning. Left main, listen. Right, you should right be gunning cancer. RCS CTO procedure without knowing what the left main is doing. Because if you get in Although, trouble the yes. right corner, you'll, I agree. You, if you're left main, then you'll be yeah. in trouble. So the, check your left main before you do the CTL. Yeah. Although there is some, some support from the right side in case. No, there's yeah. no support yeah. from the right side. Yeah, yeah. very little uh, cross-filling we can see. Yeah, you lose okay. like a right gunning yeah. cancer. You're sitting on the aortic valve too much. So I think the uh, team should be very carefully to monitor the hemodynamic change, particularly okay. for patients yes. with severe disease left for me. Mm. Uh, cool. Would you so consider changing the catheter of the left way? Would you consider changing the catheter? No, no. What, what I mean is that if the, if the disease is there in the left main, as it is visible, and you still want to do this one, then either would you opt to go change the patient towards a coronary artery bypass grafting, or would you say that we go with a four French interleft system for our retrograde injection and try and do an anti-grade? You'll affect the left bit first. Yeah, that's the easiest one. Yeah, all right. Even if, if, even if we have uh, left main disease, uh, you know, I would do first RCA and then sensation left main. But for left main, I definitely need IOS. Uh, so right now, right now, my, you know, if, if 
if I go retrograde, then I would, I would do first, uh, in that case, I would do first left vein. But we have a good chance for uh, anti-grade recognition. Let's do anti-grade CTO. We have vice pressure. We have everything is fine. fine. We have a wire in place. Uh, it's not that tight lesion, I would say. We will see by iris. I'd like to show you that. Can we prepare iris with my, yes. please? Let's focus on uh, RCA first, and then we will do left main work. Bilal, uh, Bilal Murad, I see you sitting over there wondering what you want to say. Uh, Trivir, uh, by the time uh, they are setting up IVUS, can you just reframe your uh, thoughts about what are the risks in this patient while if he attempts the RCA first and ignoring the left main? So your mic is off. Sorry? Mic, mic. Mic, mic. We're just uh, having because it's... The conventional mean. teaching, you shouldn't take on a lesion is relatively stable if you have something like left main disease because the thing that kills people is left main disease in PCI. Nothing, nothing else, you know. And so left main has to be assessed before you go to later on. Work on a stable lesion. That's what the revascularization guidelines say, at least. Not now. Not now. Where is the? Um, do you have the? I was uh, in here or? Yes, we did get it here. All right. If you, yes, okay. We have the iris on the table. Let's show you iris first, okay? Okay, iris. Can I have the iris? Can, yeah, I iris. To... Can I have the iris, please? Let's measure the um, lumen. We have a stent also. We can check the stent at the uh, LED. What he can... Okay. Right, so we have five minutes for your, uh, we see what you show us in IVAS and then we will uh, go to the talk and then come back to see the results if... Then, and then let's show you how can we cross the city or then the, yes. this is the aim of this case. Yes. No, no, you can continue, Offset. but I think give, the safety me, is first. Give me, so 10 safe, minutes. Yeah. Give, me, give me 10 minutes from now. Okay, let's see I was first and then... Sure. Um, okay, I was please. Yes, yeah, just for yeah, the okay. safety netting, so this is what we... Uh, you for. know, I would do I was later on. Can so you see the I was like, images, please? Yeah, I will see the one minute. Do you have I was here now? Oh. Okay. We don't have iris. I removed the iris catheter now. I will do it later. I promised you, okay? I will take care of this left vein anyway. So let's focus on the RCA. So first, um, you know, as a first while I choose a, a you know, my, my macro catheter is a fine cross for today, and I choose pilot 50. I choose it for two reasons. One, I need work course wire anyway to go to... Um, CTO. So I take pilot 50. I will try one or two minutes if I can cross this lesion with pilot 50. If not, I go directly by a second. Uh, or we can use any other stiff wire here because it's short lesion, straight lesion. We can use other stiff wires as well. And okay. Judo That's also good. Be, yeah, sure. Uh, good choice for here as well. And which, which, wire, now. which wire you are this using? This is pilot. Okay. Pilot 50, can I go to um, right, please? Ariel. Ariel. Yeah. Of course, there's a side branch. I might this easily can go side branch. Let's see. I think I'm touching the uh, um, proximal cap. This catheter is a short catheter. I never use short catheter because I can't use this one for the retrograde. Um, okay, can I see injection from the left, please? Left, please, injection. Yes, I think if you make a decision to go retrograde, then we probably, the left main is the then, uh, before okay. we. You see my wire goes to side branch, this is, uh, expected. Now I'm touching the uh, plaque, but I don't think I can per penetrate with this wire. Let's try a little bit. Omer, um, what will be your second choice and third choice? 
wire choices, wire ah, escalation. But yeah, it will be it will be it will be guy second, or it could be ju judo uh, three gram as a next. So let's have you don't have that much time, right? Uh, I like to have guy second. Guy so second, please. When we have, uh, do you do you need to have any sport of balloon or? Okay, this is guy second. Guy second has own curve. No need to give any small curve on it. So please look how behaved guy second. Will be different than pilot because there, there is a side branch to go for uh, pilot. Now I'm touching plug again, proximal cap, and I try to push a little bit down. I think I penetrate the proximal part. Okay, injection, please. No. Okay, sure. I'm not far from the pistol cap. We have a side branch there. Yeah, at least we are in the true limon, it looks like. Yeah, true. I think we cross now. That's very nice, okay. very good. So uh, I think probably you have 90% uh, success of the procedure. So uh, we are already uh, gone off time, but that is wonderful and uh, uh, very nice uh, and, I mean, uh, LA, and, and yeah. good demonstration and thank you. Uh, we come back uh, once you uh, finish the, if uh, we can, and now we go to the next uh, uh, presenter, please. So uh, can we now request uh, Dr. Uh, Oved yeah. from Saudi Arabia to please uh, present his case from Middle East, sorry. Dr. Oved, your presentation on the uh, front lines. Okay, the MW, uh, please. Front liner, the last front liner. The con so I go to Dr. Ovid, please. Dr. Ovid, are you ready I with your presentation? Yes, we will. We are here to see to your... <laughs> Do you hear me? You have a presentation? We can... They are talking about it. Yes, Dr. Ovid, we can see you now. Are you ready with your slide and presentation, please? Yes. Uh, you see my presentation? Yes, please. Okay. So Your presentation uh, is not visible. Your presentation is not yet on. You have to, to share your slides. How to conquer the yeah, now it is there. last frontliner CTO, best approach. Yes, we can see the slide. Can you enlarge your slide, please? Yeah, this is enlarged. Okay, that's fine. It takes time. Okay, the, please go ahead. Okay, so um, uh, thank you very much for having having me with with you guys. I wish that we had be uh, in person, uh, though there is extraordinary uh, circumstances uh, in the uh, visa related issues. Um, so I have nothing to disclose related to this presentation. So I just would like to introduce something in in, in this ten minutes. Um, and in the definition of how can how how we proceed with these uh, the approaches in these uh, uh, city of cases, uh, the focusing on success or focusing on, on improvement. So of course both of them are linked to each other and related to each other. And as Dr. Rosley said this morning, that there is a lot of prayer not only for for the for the uh, a live case, but also for any CTO case, uh, as the complication rates in CTO cases is uh, uh, might be higher than the other cases, especially in retrograde uh, approach cases. Um, the, the, we, when we have this the, the mindset of the um, uh, the fear and the seeking improvement and the, the, the and the mindset of non possible cases the being humble and learn from each other and accept the the um, uh, being uh, right or wrong at uh, any time we need to focus also with the, each other about the 
the efficiency, the success and teaching. So it's not only the success itself, it's also the efficiency. How can we reduce the radiation? How can we reduce the contrast? How can we reduce the harm to the patients and the uh, environment, the time limits, the, 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 the time zone for the cat lab where there is a lot of cases are in uh, online. So this is the true success is not only that the, the success of angiogram and focusing on angiogram. Um, always trying to evolve and getting better with time. So um, in my, in my uh, few minutes of presentation, I would like to focus on a few things. The, the three things probably, the, the, this is what I think as of now, the, the, these are uh, the, the um, that I would think about the how to concur CTO cases. CTA uh, branches, so when we open the CTO and there's a, a, a trifurcation and we call it a success probably, this is not perfect success. So we need to be uh, uh, saving branches like this case, the CTO case um, um, across the OM branch uh, with the uh, Gaia seconds, then um, the, the, the left circumflex is huge as you see here where in the retrograde uh, images that we see uh, how big is the uh, OM. So in that case, we're going to do the, the, the double lumen catheter and then the, the traverse the, uh, the other OM, uh, which is bigger. So um, the, the traversing one branch, one branch may not be uh, the, the definition of the success in this case. Another save is saving stents. So um, we can, the metal jacket, the cases from A to Z, but it, do we need to? So we, 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 we learn from each other, we learn from our uh, Japanese uh, colleagues who, who uh, 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 first started uh, um, uh, dissemination of these uh, techniques. And this is a very um, uh, interesting case that I had where there's a mid CTO, proximal uh, RCA CTO traverse, but there is the, the, the uh, distal RCA is severely diseased as you see there, but when we did IBIS and it, there was uh, something in IBIS that uh, allowed us to, to uh, lead it. So that case, that distal RCA, when we did it again, um, uh, three months later, this is how it looks like. It looks like stented. It looks, the, the, when you convert the pre and post, uh, the, the three months ago, CTO uh, at, the, at the index procedure and three months now, uh, the uh, control procedure, the, the huge difference. So what's that? This is called the IVAS, what we saw in that IVAS, we saw pyrimidial high echoic band. <clears throat> and this pyrimidial high echoic band, it's, uh, it's an internal elastic membrane that's shrinking with time in the CTO, uh, distal to the CTO, and then the vessel appear small. It's not disease, it's just the shrinkage of that internal uh, uh, or external elastic uh, lamina. And this is what they thought. This is the, the external elastic lamina. And in, in, in the uh, uh, Dr. Nishi et al. in the circulation 2015 studied this phenomenon uh, and the late lumen gain, this type of stinting is CTO and um, uh, late lumen gain positive, late lumen gain negative then, and this is only small patients. But when you look at the pretty uh, uh, medium high coic band, and they found 88% of them, they had the late lumen gain compared only 18% who had no pre-medial high coic band to have, uh, uh, not, not to um, uh, develop late lumen gain. So, so majority, this is a, a good marker just to leave that distal vessel uh, that uh, we expect that we, it will grow uh, bigger. And this is their, in their uh, uh, publication, how the vessel looks like at the time of the index procedure and how the vessel like uh, nine months later. And this is the IVAS at the index procedure where there is high curve band and the, at the um, same position IVAS uh, nine months later, disappearance of this high echoic band. And last thing is save time. And this is a case we have done uh, lately as a live case in one of in the middle CTO uh, uh, summit in Jeddah in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. And this case um, uh, patient had um, uh, 
CTO, uh, function CTO on the Luxor complex and the um, uh, uh, CTO of the RCA. So there was a problem in crossing with the uh, balloon. So we directly uh, went up to uh, Rota, then stented. And then when we went to the, uh, this is the study uh, angiogram um, the, at the index, uh, at, the, at the procedure of the CTO Luxor complex. This is when we studied it, we think this is the, uh, the CTO case where uh, we can uh, tackle it integratedly. Uh, with these tiny branches. Three months later, patient brought, this is angiogram. The, the flow might be looking better now with the collateral uh, from the uh, LAD going to the RCA. And this tiny branch might be the one we need to tackle. However, we, uh, the anti-grade uh, approach we could not multiple times there is a track multiple time and then we end up with here so what shall we do so to, for the sake of time we just go to the um as as uh omar was uh, doing earlier that he didn't allow time for pilot 50 just move on to the next one which is by a second so giving the the, the two minutes time frame probably or less uh, to test the guide wire instead of, of so, um, the, uh, hammering the vessel with the same technique, just changing techniques. At that time, we decided to change the uh, uh, technique. Um, uh, this is the uh, faucet, uh, not faucet, medical sex. Then at that time, we decided just to go retrograde as at least as a landmark. And this is the, we studied that um, study uh, that collaterals ahead of time that we know the second collateral, uh, set of collateral uh, connecting very well, and this is it. So then we passed it and we make sure that we are inside the vessel and we cross the retrograde wire, just focus on the retrograde wire here. In the retrograde wire, now it's crossing, crossing, crossing. This is how far we are from the anti grade uh, channel. So we thought. The anti-grade angiogram helped us with that line, imaginary line that I drew to you earlier, but it's not true. It's just the vessels are overlapping with each other. So going the retrograde uh, landmark, the, 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 the true channel, uh, uh, very nicely. Then it was very easy. It was crossed within 30 seconds. Just follow the track of the retrograde. Uh, guide wire. This is one of the things that we save time as well in the cat lab. And, and that case completed and I was done, then uh, stented and the, the, the uh, radiation that the patient exposed only uh, up to gray. And it, was, it lasted for about uh, uh, 90 minutes. And this final angiogram and this is a pre-angiogram. Uh, no, this is the final angiogram of the of the, uh, the LAD, just to make sure that we didn't do. Whenever we removed the guide wire, I think there is a question from the audience: uh, Why Omar kept the wire in the LAD? We always keep the wire in the LAD to uh, as a security to the um, uh, lift system. Not only that, security; it's also stabilization of the. Um, uh, of the guide because when we're doing uh, the uh, pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling in the, in the recipient vessel, so probably the donor vessel uh, guide may be uh, disengaged. Disengagement, re-engagement, disengagement, re -engagement may cause harm to the left pain. And the patient has a borderline left pain disease like the case with Omer. So I don't think, to be honest with you, that the case of Omer, that the left pain is significant. I think he's right. It's just to proceed to the RCA, then uh, 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 pay attention to the left pain in his case, um, especially that patient had had uh, a cath in, in June, and it was definitely assessed at that time, just um, two months ago. Thank you so much, Aved. Uh, it's a wonderful presentation. And now... Uh, we uh, might come back with a uh, discussion if uh, the time allows. Can we now go to the next presentation from uh, United States, uh, Dr. Ehtisham uh, Mahmood, uh, Acute Coronary uh, Perforation Case-Based Approach. Dr. Ehtisham, it is a pleasure to have you, and if you are ready with your presentation, please. Great. 
Thank you for having me. I'll share my screen. Not yet. Okay, let's just see. Is that showing up? Yes, it is. Perfect. Thank you. So I've been given the task over the next 10 minutes to uh, present an approach to coronary perforations. And uh, what I'll do is I've got two cases and I'll, uh, they will both highlight examples of how best to manage coronary perforations, one of the most catastrophic things we have to manage in the cath lab. I have no relevant disclosures. So here's my first case. It's a 78-year-old woman uh, with multiple medical problems. She presented with an end STEMI. Uh, troponin peaked to 0 0.9. She had EF 45 to 50 percent with an apical anterior uh, hypokinesis. She had deep anterior T-wave inversions. We took her to the cath lab, and what you see is a long tubular stenosis um, here that extends from the proximal to the mid-left anterior descending artery. Mm -hmm. What's very interesting about this case is I had just, I enrolled her in a new clinical trial on a new stent that I had not used previously. We stented the mid-LAD, we stented the proximal LAD, and we then, uh, these are two 3-0 uh, the mid LAD was a 3 0 stent, the prox is a 3 5. I used that prox balloon to post dilate the mid. And this is my next angio. And what you can see is that right around the site of the distal stent, there's a dilation, there's slow flow. And as soon as you see this, you need to recognize that this could be a potential perforation which we did in this case, and there's no flow down into the LAD. We balloon tamponaded it. By the time we did that, you can now see that the perforation is extended. We covered that with a 3.0 by 20 millimeter papyrus covered stent. And there was a distal edge dissection that we placed a small drug looting stent to cover it. And here's what that result looks like. So relatively quick recognition within the recognition of this perforation and the covered stent in place was probably no longer than 90 seconds. We got an echocardiogram in the cath lab. There was no significant pericardial effusion. We did a right heart catheterization. We did multiple echoes. We admitted the patient with the right heart catheter in place and she recovered very well. This is in contrast to let me now share a second case and then we'll go over the management. This is a 90 year old man referred for an LAD CTO PCI due to intractable class four angina. He had known three vessel disease including chronically occluded LAD and RCA he was on optimal medical therapy. And in fact, when I first saw him, he also had critical aortic stenosis. His EF was 40%. And so I went ahead and initially did a TAVR, thinking that that was his primary problem because his lesions had been chronic. He improved a little bit after the TAVR, but his symptoms persisted. He had an inferior wall scar and an anterior and apical viability. His JCTO score for the LAD range between three to four. He had a blunt cap, it was a calcified lesion, two centimeters in length. It had been, it had been attempted at two previous places before uh, unsuccessfully. So let's look at what the angiogram looks like. On the left side, you see the TAVR valve is in place. <coughs> it's an occluded RCA, but as I mentioned before, the inferior wall was uh, dead and infarcted. The LAD is occluded, but you can see beyond the two centimeter occlusion, it recanalizes. And there were perforators. That's a very large first septal perforator that provides retrograde collaterals to the distal LAD. So I'll leave this up a little bit because it's really important to study this. And so when the initial attempt was made to recanalize this, the very first attempt was down the septal, retrograde, in, with an attempt into the LAD. That was not successful. So then went antegrade, 
and going integrate a series of wires from the Xeon Black, Fielder XDA, Pilot 200, Gladius Mongo, ultimately a Gaia 2. That first set of wires looks like it's somewhere subintimal, but then here's what it looked like. So now there is a run through workhorse wire and you can see that the wire traverses what appears to be the apical LED. Part of the reason I'm showing this is to caution everybody uh, that when you get this wire and you can get it down to the apex and it seems to go into multiple branches, we've traditionally thought that we're in the true lumen. So what happened next is that the Corsair Pro was withdrawn back and a 2.0 balloon was used to dilate that very prox occlusion. And I will now show you the angio immediately afterwards. So what you see is that in point of fact, this wire is not in the true lumen. You see the LED is still filling, but the wire is not in the true lumen. And now this is an Ellis grade three frank perforation into the pericardial space. And the perforation is actually caused by our 2.0 balloon at the very proximal part of where we exited the LED. So now the question is, how do you best manage it? So the first thing we did is we went ahead, took the same 2.0 balloon and inflated it at the point of perforation from the LED into the pericardial space. So the run through wire, which is our workhorse wire stays in place. We dilated this balloon and we then did an echo there was hemodynamic compromise very, very quickly. So we went ahead and did a pericardiocentesis and placed a pericardial catheter. You can see the drain is in place. We accessed the left femoral. We had initially started with the right femoral. Now we access the left femoral and use the ping pong technique to put a second guiding catheter. The original guide catheter was still there the balloon was never deflated. So you have the balloon and over the wire that's in the pericardial space. That has not been deflated. A second guide catheter is used to engage and a run through wire has been positioned here into that first septum. And a balloon is in place. But what you actually see here is not a balloon, but an uninflated 3020 papyrus stent. The idea was that we would place a covered stent from the LAD into the septal to cover this area that we had uh, perforated. So that is in place. The two guides are in place. And here's what it looks like after the papyrus has been placed. The papyrus stent goes from the LAD to the first septal. The wire that was in the pericardial space in the balloon has been removed. IVIS followed by optimization of papyrus, which was post dilated to 3.5. But the story doesn't end here. So take a look at where, at the very tip of the septal wire. There seems to be a little bit of contrast hang up and opacification. And that would remained unchanged. Taking more pictures, that now starts to grow and part of what was going on is that the pericardial drain continued to drain blood. And now what you can see is that there is, from the very tip of the septal perforator, continuation of contrast extravasation into the pericardial space. So this was very likely from the original attempt at the retrograde uh, can uh, attempt into the LAD. So now how do we best manage this, especially keeping in mind that from the septal are very, very important collaterals going to the LAD. So then we went ahead and put a microcatheter and we wanted to ensure that we attempted occlusion of the second perforation beyond the collaterals that were feeding the LAD. And hopefully you can see two sets of, there are two collaterals, one 
right where the microcatheter is, going to the prox LED, and one at around the mid-segment where the radio-opaque wire is, going into the distal LED. So we initially attempted fat embolization. That did not work. Then we exchanged out the microcatheter, uh, the Caraval microcatheter to an over-the-wire uh, coil delivery system. And you see here multiple coils, the Azure coils are being deployed in the distal septal perforator beyond where the two branches to the LAD are. And after we have coil embolized the very distal septal, you can see that the collaterals are in place still to the proximal and distal LAD, but beyond that, we have coil embolized the distal septal and that second point of perforation. For this patient, over the ensuing 24 hours, it was about 500 milliliters of blood drained. Uh, we left the pericardial drain in place. We gave a total of three units of packed red cells normal saline, we had to use some low-dose uh, norepinephrine for 24 hours. Two days later, there was no more drainage, the pericardial drain was removed, and the patient was discharged five days after this procedure. So what are my main take-home points? First, if it's a proximal vessel perforation, immediately make sure you call cardiac surgery and any hemodynamic support that you need to put in place, which often includes an urgent or emergent pericardiocentesis and vasopressor support, as well as cross-matching of blood. Prox immediately balloon tamponade. As I highlighted, the first case, we immediately recognized it, balloon tamponaded it, and were able to put in a covered stent quite quickly. And in that case, there was very little pericardial fluid, no issues of hemodynamic compromise. The second case I showed you was a much more complicated perforation, required a covered stent that was not, that was from the LAD into the septal to exclude the point of perforation. But then we also had a distal vessel perforation. We re requires reversal of anticoagulation. Sometimes a prolonged proximal vessel balloon tamponade will work. Echo urgently, because if there's pericardial fluid with hemodynamic compromise, you, you have to remove that fluid um, relatively quickly. It doesn't take much for uh, cardiac tamponade. 50 to 70 cc's uh, is uh, all it takes. And for that situation, make sure you're facile with a sub approach. Fat or thrombus embolization followed by coil embolization. So my final slide, it's really important if you're going to do these you know, any kind of PCI, make sure you're understanding of the various supplies and equipment. You know where the pericardiocentesis kit is. Make sure you're comfortable with all the equipment on the kit. Know about the various covered stents. In our lab for the last, I would say, two years, anytime there's a perforation, the only one we use is the papyrus stent. Coils, there's a number of different coils, different companies from Medtronic to Terumo, to Cordis, who all make coils that uh, we use. Uh, but the key takeaway is uh, this new uh, Cordis system, uh, the Medtronic system I've shown you here is, is 014 compatible, but there's a number of them that are 018 uh, guide wire compatible. So I will stop there and open up for any questions. Thank you, Ehtisham. Wonderful uh, presentation, particularly timely intervention to salvage uh, the uh, complications. Thank you so much. In the interest of time, we have the next uh, live case ready. I'm sorry we might come back for the discussion after the second presentation. So thank you so much, uh, Tisham. Now we move on to uh, the uh, next presentation from Turkey. Dr. Uh, Gunez, uh, uh, could you please uh, be ready for your presentation on distal coronary perforation? Dr. Gunez, please.